uh, check. Okay, so <laughs> my audio is off again. What an idiot! Oh my god! I should have I should have double checked. So today's uh, captain's log, September eighteenth, two thousand nineteen, Wednesday, two o'clock p.m. San Francisco time. Hello, guys. Good morning, Cat Forty Four. Good morning, uh, climate. Climate ninety nine, or did I pronounce it correctly? So, uh, what is the topic today? So, if if you guys, uh, you know, ask me questions or pick a topic, you know, from the from 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 the list here. So, I was talking about you know what we did yesterday. We we talked about Jean Lanier, a very interesting guy, kind of like Richard Stallman ish, uh, but they have slightly different ideas. We talked about that yesterday, and no donation to Wikipedia, and no you millennials, you know the younger generation. Since about late, I would say late two thousands, you know late two thousand, like two thousand starting. Let's say starting from two thousand five, that's when you know we're talking about the history of a culture. So for you his, historians out there, you know you better <laughs> you better listen closely. Log this, okay. So around two thousand five or later, this is when gaming gaming start. You know, gaming culture. You you begin to have lots of gamers, and this is also when you start to have gaming competitions, like like the gamers. You know, gamer typically looks idiotic. You know, they are nerds. They look ugly. They are teen. You know, fifteen. You know, teenagers, and they kind of idiotic. Okay, they 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 are good at nothing. You know. But they just play games all day. But now, since about two thousand five, now they have a career. They have they become professional gamer. You have all these gaming competitions. You win if you are a champion. You win million dollars. You know, so you know you you have these gamers. You know they and and all the and and it's an industry. You know, it's not just, it's a, it became a industry. You have gamers. You have um, teams. Corporate sponsors. You have game shows, you know, and billions of people watch around the world,、uh, and many of them are Korean or other countries. You know, they especially Korean.、Uh, they, you know, they are very, you know, they they play that. A lot of people play games, you know, all day. So Atesh, good morning, Atesh. Good morning to Chile. Talk about ten Golan. Write a scripting validate. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so、uh, let me let me take two more minutes to finish about the gaming stuff. So gaming culture starts around two thousand, after two thousand five. Then you also start to have the cosplay culture. Now cosplay is kind of related to gaming and also related to Japanese comics, but cos cosplay, you know, and 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 lots of girls. Okay, this is also the beginning where uh, uh, girls, women. They got involved. Actually, the the yeah that that is true. But they are you know women began to get involved in lots of things. Like like for example, today we have a lot of female、uh, programmers. Hello, Kasa. Long time no see. Mas、uh, Masij. How do you pronounce the, your name? My God, that's Polish name, I suppose. Masij. I you know I I don't know but I just I you know the, from the look of it I would say mas mas masij uh watchtowiz <laughs> I don't know okay I don't know how do you pronounce your name so anyway so let's get on let's start to talk about that Golan stuff Golan and Emacs uh validate bracket so let's let's try let me show you the Emacs version. First,、uh, bracket bra c k change bracket pairs.、Uh, so what we want to do is we want to have a command that validate brackets. But first of all, I need to show you that command. So you know, I'm going to demonstrate that. Then.、Uh, Then maybe we'll do a Golan. You know, I, 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 you know that that would be a.、Uh, okay, so so let's go to my Emacs 
init file, go to the directory and search for uh, search for bracket, search for validate. Okay, none. Okay, then search again for uh, validate match. What the? Oh, we want to search el.el file, files, not .html. So search again, validate, valid. Ah, it doesn't automatically pop up. Let me, let me, let's do this again. So you are right, Polish, I'm working, I'm working with engineers from many countries and could hear 10,000 versions of my name, so do not worry, okay? Massage, okay, so for now I just say massage, mas, mas, massage. <laughs> okay, so let's search for valid, okay? Uh, let's search in this directory and OEL files, okay? And let's search for bracket. So minor mod for highlighting matching brackets or val validate them. Okay, so that's actually sub bracket mod. That's not public yet. Uh, I wrote that a while ago. So I'm trying to find my Emacs command. I have a command that va validate uh, brackets. So okay, that's not, let's do it again. So let's search again. Let's call repeat complex command. Let's uh, search for match. Uh, then you get all stream match. Okay, that's too many. That's not good. Okay, so let's go to the directory and let's just let's go to miscellaneous. So hold on a second. Magnify. Uh, okay. So search for miscellaneous. So I have this miscellaneous file that contains all miscellaneous commands, and list matching lines, list all different. Okay, then search for validate. Okay, search for bracket. Uh, okay, it's not there. We can we can find it because last time. Uh, so go back to the directory. Let's see. A brief. Okay, let's try this. A brief alias atom rss blogger utility diet commands. Uh, not diet commands. File association. Not that. Font. Google Earth. Google Earth. Emacs HTML. Um, this is all HTML related commands. Now let's list matching lines. Different. Okay, and let's see, and uh, update syntax color hex, Python ref linkify, YouTube, insert date, copy, remove Wikipedia links. Okay, not here. Back to diet, linkify, init, key binding, key binding, key binding, key macro, miscellaneous, mouse commands, mouse commands, Microsoft Windows reference, linkify. Replace quotes, no. Settings, wordy, class site. Uh, move image and list non matching lines. List non matching lines, okay. Uh, add, okay. So maybe it's XR bracket mod. No, I don't think it's here. This is XR bracket mod. I started this few years ago, but I actually, um, I think it works, but this is not what we wanted. This one is written in 2013, uh, yeah, about five years ago. I want to, I need to find the Emacs validate bracket command so that I can show a demo. What do I mean by that? And, uh, but now we are having problem f 
finding that command miscellaneous macro file association let's let's just try mx okay first of all sar start command log mod okay so all my emx command is going to show on the left window okay so <coughs> mouse command where is my validate brackets commands saw corner bracket to HTML mod overlay Emacs overlay and chart properties Emacs syntax parse uh, let's search for bracket again bracket search search in all EL files so ignore bracket bracket move bracket bracket minor mod for minor mod to highlight matching bracket no uh, bracket or quote by syntax table no emacs a brief no emacs key bindings no parenthesis quote uh I think that is it. <laughs> oh god. I named this XA check paren ba balance. Okay, let's go there. Open open. Okay, here is the function. Um now to region. Okay, so here is the function that's sixty lines. Uh XA check parenthesis balance. Uh I don't like that term. <coughs> You know, I, I, you know, I know, you know, I used to name this as, um, okay, there's a Emacs, there's a, a page on my website. So if you search this page, Xali Emacs check parenthesis balance, you will find the code here and you can use it. So let me just show you how to use it, first of all. Uh, but hold on, before we do that, let's open. Any comments, opinions, questions, interesting things, just post it. Okay, I like that. So let's go to Ksa Talk Show. Uh, Ksa Talk Show, Ksa Talk Show, today, uh, today's date, uh, add a today's date. Ksa new page, create a new HTML page, make it li, cut it, put it here. Okay, then go to the page, go to the page, show in browser back to Emacs paste paste again paste previous okay uh, make a make a list okay that is uh, you know uh, a log of today's topic so we talked about that page and uh, so I'm going to right now I'm going to demonstrate this uh, command now yes so close that uh, close that close that Okay, so actually close that. Back to talk show, open that, and uh, this is the command, okay? And uh, what does that mean? For example, I'm just going to call it, uh, actually describe function, let's see the, uh, fu let's see the function documentation. So describe function, the name, and so it says, check if there are unbalanced parentheses bracket quotes in current buffer or selection, okay? If so, place cursor there, print error to message buffer, okay? That is what it does. So let's call it. So meta x uh, check print balance, enter. It says all brackets quotes match. You see, you see that mini buffer at, but, but at the bottom. So that's fantastic. Now, so, so this page is all valid. But let's try, for example, now I start a parenthesis let's let's call the command again oh so then, then now it says mismatch found the char that has no matching pair okay let's open a new buffer let's switch it to message uh, buffer okay message is buffer so every message is emacs log them to the message buffer so you know if if there's some message in the mini buffer you 
it will go away after a while after 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 you do something else. But you can always see them in the message buffer. Uh, the message buffer is named, you know, uh, star messages star asterisk. So it says, uh, let's see, what does it say? Oh, oh, it, oh, it, there, mismatch found. The char forty two zero nine one has no matching pair. Now, forty is uh, let's see what is forty. I forgot. So let's call it again. Uh, let's put the cursor here. Let's call it again. Okay. Same error. So the char forty two zero nine one. It doesn't. It should move the cursor to 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 the mismatch place, but it's not doing that. Uh, I haven't used this command for a long time, but so let's go to. Let's go to the source code. Describe char. Go to the source code and let's look at the file. So the last time I edited is 2018. Okay, last year. So you check these brackets. Um, first of all, let's find out what are the error. What does the error mean? So this needs improvement because it you know the documentation does not explain what are the 40 and and stuff but actually i i kind of know what it what they mean for example it says it says 40 2091 has no matching pair so if i we can do what we can do now is uh go to call the command go to char okay then type 40 Okay, that's not right. It's not that. So let's call go to char again. Type type two zero nine one. There it is. So it, you see, so two zero nine one, the second uh, number is the position where the error occurs. But for example, let's let's just complete it for now. So so, so now we have a good bracket pair. Now let's call the command again. Uh, check check parent balance good all things match and now now let me show you a different uh, parent Let, let's say uh, you see this is a curly quote you see we can put it inside actually we can do a lot uh, quotes let me show you okay uh, so we have all kind of quotes uh, oops. Okay. Uh, no, we don't want that. Uh, okay, we have several kind of quotes. Okay, let's call the command again. So I'll check param balance. It's all good, all match. But now, if we say, for example, if we move this one to there, then we got a problem. You see. You see this. You see we got a problem. So now let's call the command. So check parent balance. All quotes match. That's a mistake. So let's go back to the code. What's going on? <laughs> well, this is this is embarrassing. What? Why is it? Uh... Okay, I know what's going on because it's actually not. You see, we got a tortoise bracket here. So let me show you. So this bracket here, if you call describe char, you can see the name is opening tortoise shell bracket. And that bracket, OK, now close that. That bracket is actually not one of the bracket we are checking. So let's add it. You know, this is the power of Emacs. Let's just add it, add that bracket, OK? Let's, um, hold on a second. So we want to select this line, narrow to region, and replace any of that by that, OK? Now we want to make it like that, so widen. So now you see. So now it's more clear. 
So you see, we do we have the t uh, total total is bracket? No, we don't have the total is bracket. So let's add it. Copy the line, paste it here, and modify it. Uh, so we got a total is bracket. There. Magnify. So you see now the the total is bracket is here. Now we evolve change the date version date and now eval function. Oh, it cannot eval. So wait, it you know here here's a bug in Emacs. You see you have the you have the function. Let me show you what's a function. The function is called eval defend. Okay, that's the name. You see eval defend. So what this function does is that when you call that, it will evaluate the current function your cursor is in. So my cursor is inside the function. I call the function, it should evaluate this function. But right now, if we do it, if we do it, uh, I, I call the shortcut, OK? Look at the left left window, you'll see the command. Now I call um, eval defend. You see, you see here, eval defend. But actually, Emacs give, gives me a error because it, it gives me a uh, some kind of a parsing error. Okay, why? This is a bug in Emacs Lisp. This is very annoying because I've talked to the you know many many Emacs fanatics. They don't be they don't believe it. Anyway, so let me explain. Okay, so this is a bug. This. When your Emacs Lisp code is not well formatted, what do you mean? Like well formatted like that? When they are not well uh, formatted, I mean not that's not the right word. When they are not, um, yeah, the line formatting, yeah, the line formatting is not well formatted, such as for example like that. Okay, then that eval defend uh, function will break it will not work for example let's try it again uh, let's try it again okay call it oh now it works wait now it's now actually it evaluated xr url file path you see the mini buffer at the bottom so now it actually evaluated the next function in you know, the fucked up you know emacs fucked up like so so you know i've been in emacs for 20 years so i know a lot of people many are friends and even friends, you know, some I know, you know, some friends will say, oh, just always use eval defend, eval defend, and they always say, oh, use um, uh, parent, you know, par edit, you know, which is a which is a package that helps you format your edits. Th those are all garbage. It is because those that you have this bug, and they don't know the the reason they don't know about this bug is because they are so used to, they are so used to uh, pretty print the Emacs Lisp code, like using par edit or using other means, you know, the, basically what they do is that they manually format Emacs Lisp code all the time, like every line, like many, many packages, when you press enter, it'll try to format that, that line. So in essence, they are actually manually formatting every single line with the help of the uh, editor, you know, some for example in Python, you see, you know, you press, um, you know, right now I'm using XR Emacs Lisp mod. When I press tab, it 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 pretty print it it formats the entire function. Okay, so that's why you see, right now I have several places that's not corrected formatted, but I can press enter, it formats the whole function. Th this is what you want. Now, if I switch to um, let's re undo. If I switch to uh, let's undo. Okay, Let, did I make a mistake here somewhere? Let's undo, 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 undo. Okay, so if I switch to let's switch to Emacs list mod. Okay, this is the default Emacs mod. Okay, now if I press enter, nothing happens. Now I have to move here. Press enter. That's how you format. <laughs> You know, basically each line, and you see, now I press enter, it format that line. What if my cursor is here? I press enter, it doesn't work, because the formatting is based on previous line. So it's, you know, 
this is true for almost every major mod in Emacs. When you format it, it is based on the previous line, you know. So so when you press enter, nothing happens. But if your your cursor is here, then you press enter, then that works. So in order to fix this, you have to call. Uh, you have to call. Uh, it's very complicated. There's there are many commands. For example, there's a command called indentation. Uh, indent for tab command. You have to select it. Okay, let's try it. Okay, now it works. You see, it's no good. Okay, so what you want is. Uh, okay, what you want is, for example, close this, reopen, magnify. Now we are in XA Lisp mod, XA E Lisp mod. So what you want is pre press one single button right now. See, it formats the whole thing. So now it's formatted. Now let's try to run the eval defend. Okay, now we run it, it worked. You see, the mini buffer says, so check parent balance. It means this uh, function is now evaluated. Okay. So now, now let's go back to the uh, to the to to this page. Remember, we have a mismatched parent here. Now let's try to let's now let's call um, so check parent balance. There it is. Mismatch found. You see. You see this uh, error here is here is the error. Let's magnify this. Okay, so mismatch found the char, the char that. Okay, now I understand the message. So it gives a bunch of pairs. The first pair, I mean the first number is the Unicode number for the character. I think. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so now now it's got a problem. You see, now it it actually found the mismatch parent. Now let's fix it. Okay, uh, let's fix it. Cut that and put it back here. Okay. Now let's call it. Save it. Call the function. Enter. Now all bracket match. That's good. Okay. Now, so that is the that is a demo. That is what we want to do. So I want to write a version, a similar version in Golan. Uh, I'm not sure I can do it in half an hour, but I we uh, we could we could try. Um, so let me check out the comments. Uh, so Taka, so so hello, so so so. Uh, Miao says fact paren use indentation. This sense paren. Uh, if everyone is pretty printing already, there's no more point for brackets. Thoughts on mini Karen? What is mini Karen? Yeah, I don't know what is mini Karen. So okay, we now let's let's write that in GoLang. So let's see how long I've been talking, and let's see, let's do this quickly. See if I can make it. So okay, twenty minutes. Now let's see what we have in another 20 minutes. So first of all, go to, let's copy this, okay, uh, create a new buffer, paste it, save it, xx, today's date, el, because we need to reference this code. Now, um, actually, let's do this, cut Make a elise code here. Colorify. D that show in browser. That's good. We have the code here. Now, D that buffer. Now, now let's go to um, Golan. Okay, Golan. So here is my Golan tutorial. We we all need to uh, reference this. <laughs> frequently, because I haven't code, coded Golan for like a month. So we have Golan, and now let's create. Let's start to code Golan. Yes. Uh, what we do is we create a new buffer. Save it. Uh, okay. I I want to save as this name. Okay. Let me show you. Go to diet. 
copy the file name now switch to, to this buffer save it paste the file name and end end in go okay so now we got the new name now close that so go land now go okay now let's begin that's the uh, here's a template for Golang. Every basically every Golang file will be like this. We will have this template. Package main, uh, import format, and function main. That's you always need that. You always every Golang file need a package main, and every Golang um, file every package. Every Golang package needs a main function, a function named main. Okay. Uh, by the way, let me mention this quickly. So I have a Golang tutorial. So if you never programmed Golang before, this is a good tutorial. Okay, check out. Uh, you know, support me. Uh, check out my tutorial and share it with friends. I love Golang. Golang is my favorite industrial programming language. So I spend a lot of time. You know, I because I love it. So this is act, this is one of my good tutorials for good for beginners at least. Uh, I, 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 there are some topics I did not cover. For example, some of the topics, the dramatic topics that gets nerds excited is go routine. Uh, that is for parallel programming, go routine, and also uh, interface, go interface, which which is more or less about OOP. Yeah, so go routine I did not cover, go interface I did not cover, uh, and that that's basically the two major parts I did not cover. Okay, you know some people read my tutorial and then then they complain. <laughs> you know those are actually advanced. You know for for beginners, mine is good. You know good for, um, you know for for the first three months at least coding GoLang. So Masij says, I have a question. Have you had a chance to test key mouse device? Yes. Uh, no. Uh, you mentioned this device in your web page. Yeah, I have not. I have never um, uh, tested. I have never um, tried that um, key mouse. So a test. Everything so so far so good. The the speed of tutorial is so far so good. I want to focus on the GoLand though. So so so, but let me quickly mention the key mouse. So you go to Kasali keyboard blog, and the key mouse is in the. Uh yeah, cool, <laughs> cool attach. So key mouse is in the uh, do it yourself section. Uh, key mouse. This is the device. Okay, so this device, uh, someone sells it. Actually, it's a kind of a small company that sells it. So this is a mouse and keyboard combined. Now they have a trackball on the keyboard. So, and also the, uh, I think the keyboard, right? The I think the keyboard also functions as a mouse. Uh, there's a video here. Yeah, if you go to my website. Okay, so let me show you. So let's see. Paste this link. Uh, get the link and go to the Chrome. Open a new buffer, new new tab. Go there. So key mouse device. This is my uh, keyboard website. So there are a few videos you can watch, and there are, you know, this guy, this stupid guy, uh, Linus. He, you know, he 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 did a review of that, and this guy also did a review. But anyway, the the point so this whole thing can work like a mouse, like you move the whole keyboard, and also it has a trackball. It's kind of, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of do it yourself. But it's made by a company you can buy. It's expensive. Like, how much was it? Three hundred dollars or something or more. And my, so I have never tried it. I've never seen it. I mean, I've never touched it. But, but based on my impression, I, I'm not too, I do not think this is that good. Okay, I, I mean it's better than normal keyboards, but I rather prefer, you know, just 
you know, I just prefer my, you know, the this so-called typical kind of, you know, my kinesis or ergo docs or a bunch of others. So I think the because 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 I think the key mount is kind of too cumbersome. I mean, you gotta when you when you want to move the mouse, you gotta drag. You have to drag the whole thing. You know, it's kind. You know, I prefer things that are mobile and small. This is kind of too clunk, too too big, too clunky, uh, clunky. Okay, so copy that. Close it. Back to Emacs. Back to Emacs. Okay, uh, linkify. So okay, that's about key mouse. So Majish says I've been using this device for eight months now. Oh, okay, that's great. Uh, took me about one month to remap it to make make to uh to make it Emacsy for Emacs. I can give you more user experience details if you are interested. Oh yeah, say okay by all means <laughs> do. I love these kind of comments because th there's actual information. You know, since you you actually have used it, you know, yeah. So, uh, do you have a blog? I I, I suppose not. I mean, if you have a blog, post it. Okay, otherwise, uh, just type it. But 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 let me go back to the GoLand because we need to uh, um, finish that. That that'll take some time. Let's go back to GoLand. Uh, we we can talk about the key mouse, you know, uh, another day, in more detail. So let's go back to GoLand, and we want to, right? We want to write the command that um, that validate brackets. So let's make it simple. So all the brackets we we want to check is, uh, let's just say two of them. So paren and that paren and square bracket. Okay. So this is all, uh, all the brackets we want to check. We we ignore all the other kind of bracket. So uh, you know I haven't looked at this code for a while. So I actually I should have done some kind of preparation, uh, because first of all you need to know the what 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 is the algorithm to use. Yeah. So but let's let's just move along. Let's try what we can do. Um, so first of all, you need an algorithm. So what algorithm to to uh, do this task? So basically, so you, so you got a buffer. Basically, you got a bunch of text. You got a big string. You want to go through every string from the beginning. Okay. So then, whenever you see a bracket. So, for example, when so for for our purposes, we are going to check these four characters, square brackets and parentheses. So, whenever you see any of those characters, okay, you you push that character to a stack, okay. Then you keep going. Then when you see another character, you push it to a stack, okay. Now, every time you push to a stack, you check. You check if if the current stack matches the previous stack. I mean, if they are a pair. If so, you remove those two. You know, you remove those two. So that's what you do. Right. So you go through the text file. Uh, go go through the huge text, uh, big string, from the beginning. Every time you see a a bracket, you push to a stack. Whenever you push to a stack, you check. You check if that bracket, if if the the previous stack matches it. If it does, then you remove both. Okay, then you continue. Okay, and yes, until you reach uh, the end of buffer, that's done. Now, once you reach to the end of buffer, you look at the stacks. If the stack is empty, everything is good. If it's not empty, then you have mismatched brackets. Okay, does that make sense? Uh, so that's what we that's that's the algorithm. Okay, so uh, so let's look at my. Did I do explanation here? No, I didn't do explanation here. So actually, yeah. So that's about it. Uh, actually, 
I have a website. I have an essay talking about that. Let's look at that. Xali uh, check brackets. Okay, so actually I have an essay. So this is actually almost, this is 2011. So Lisp, Python, Perl, Ruby code to validate matching brackets. So I posted this as a uh, programming problem. So, you know, I, I encourage people to to submit their solutions. So my solution is for Emacs. You know, I wrote this in 2011. Uh, and and this can can be applied to all files in the directory, so it can can work on uh, hundreds of files. And then someone have provided. Oh, this is me actually. Oh wait wait, some someone this guy Raymond Hettinger he's provided a Python three solution. Uh, okay, so I, I'm glad we look at this because now we can just, <laughs> we can just trans translate this Python code to Golang. Uh, and actually, there are several other solutions. There are three more Python solutions. There are two two Ruby solutions. Let's look at them. Uh, it's uh, there are two Ruby solutions. Um, when I try to open it, the browser start to launch some other editor. I guess I don't know. So let let's look at the let's look at it. So here's the file. Let's open it locally. Show in browser. So there are Python versions, Ruby versions. There are Perl versions. There's this one Perl version. Okay, there it is. There is this Perl version. There is this Ruby version. Oh, this Ruby version is very short. Now I have not verified them, so <laughs> sometimes they are wrong. You know, like when you post a problem to the programming forum, uh, you got a lot of answers, but many of them are just wrong or very bad quality. So this Ruby code is very short. It's only like fifteen lines, but I, I, I haven't checked. I don't know if it's you know it works well. I can be sure that my Emacs Lisp code work well. Okay, my 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 Emacs Lisp version. So anyway, and there's even a common Lisp version. So here's a common Lisp version. So anyway, we're gonna do it in GoLang. So okay, so let's let's let's. Okay, so let's do it. This is going to actually be a exploration, and you are exploring with me. <laughs> okay, so how, do, how where do we begin? So, so first of all, you need to read the file. So let's write out write out write down what we need to do. So, open a file. Given a file path. You need to open the file. Read the file as a string, okay? By the way, uh, so Atesh, are you you already know some Golan or are you completely new? Because if you are completely new, then this might be useful. I mean, <laughs> I suppose maybe maybe you already know some Golan, but probably you are not expert yet. But you, I mean, if you are expert, then this, then you are wasting time here. But if you are, you know, Golang beginner, you know, you you might, you know, we we could learn how to read the file and things like that. I'm not sure I can finish it today because I haven't coded Golang for a month, for for two months. So we need to okay, open the file, read the file as a string, then go through the string. Whenever a bracket is uh, encountered, push it to a stack. When pushing to stack, also check if previous. Uh, how do you say? It? So we have a stack, which is a data structure. But how do you say the 
each level I mean do you let's just call it level check if previous level match matches the current level if so remove both okay then continue to go through the stream till end of stream okay then now if stack has nothing or is good no mismatched brackets uh, if stack has something then we have mismatched bracket okay let's just do it very simply so first of all open the file so let's read uh, some comments. Good, no, good morning, Kathy. Great to see you join in. Hello to London. Uh, so Marcij have said. Marcij says, in short, you have right hand mouse if you if if quite heavy. Okay, quite heavy. Yeah, that's the issue I'm thinking. So, but if you can get used to. Okay, typing performance is for the for me similar as for Kinesis. Great. I'm happy to share more details later on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, even you know, either feel free to type 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 it because I'm sure a lot of people watching my videos are interested in that. And also, um yeah, that's a great great feedback. And also you use Kinesis, that's great. Yeah, but it 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 being too heavy is an issue. Yeah, I don't like mouse too heavy at all. In fact, even the gaming mouse is too heavy. Any wireless mouse with batteries is too heavy. I mean, it's not ideal. I like the mouse to be as light as possible, you know, so I can actually just nudge it. Uh, yeah, so I, 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 so I, I don't think I like the, uh, the key mouse. So anyway, Melcast says Mini Karen is a proof solver based on scheme implemented using B trees. Oh, that's interesting. Mini Karen. Uh, let's let's see. Search duck duck go for mini Karen. Okay, mini Karen Wikipedia. Let's see what it says. Mini Karen is a family of programming languages for relational programming. Oh, relational. That's a fancy word. I actually don't know what the that is. Relational. Oh, logic programming. Shit. Why they say relational? <laughs> they, it, I know what logic programming is, but they call it, they say relational programming. Anyway, it's a mini Karen is a of programming language. Programming language uh, is a family of programming languages. Oh, a family for relational programming, as relations are bidirectional. If mini Karen is given an expression and a desired output, mini Karen can run the expression backward finding all possible inputs to the expression that produce the desired output okay so I think as, as so I, I think this is a logic you know in a category of logic programming or constraint programming uh, and it's good for I suppose this is this language is good for uh, back backtracking algorithms and so on and by the way, yesterday I was, you know, yesterday I was reading about Gnuth, and Gnuth has this uh, thing called Algorithm X. <laughs> uh, actually, we should go back to focus on the. Wait, where did my. Where did my chat box go? Did I just close it? Okay, so back back in here. So let's
No, I'm not using evil, guys. Luis, I'm not using evil. I'm using soft flag keys. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me refinish the comments. Uh, and let's go. Yeah, uh, we should actually focus on the Golan because I'm not sure I can actually finish it. But let me finish the comments. So anyway, there there is mini Karen. Okay, mini Karen. So that, that's interesting. Thanks, Miao. Uh, oh God, I need to magnify the text. You when you you get when you are fifty, you cannot read. Uh, mini Karen. Okay, the author runs a show like you on YouTube. He's really nice. Oh, okay. So, well, I didn't know. So, Mashit says, moving hand back and forth was worth issue for me for years. Okay, let's go back to, let's go back to Golan. Focus. So first, so we have the outline of algorithm. First of all, we need to open a file. How do you do that? I don't remember. So I haven't go, uh, you know, I haven't coded Golan for a month or two, two months actually. So open a file. I have a tutorial here. So just go here. Um, attach. Okay. So, so go here and open a file. There is. read file that's what we want so read whole file read first x bytes so we want to read whole file so here is what we do we just copy and paste copy the paste copy and paste is the most powerful paradigm in programming and you need also the iotl uh, package so so there it is iotl package and read whole file yes now before we now before we read the file we need a file path so let's define a file path okay and what file path okay so let's open a new buffer save this as xx date uh, uh, xx date bracket dot text okay let's save this file as that by that name okay so here's the file and let's give it some paren so we can uh, gonna check this file and uh, I'm gonna go you know a bunch a uh, bunch of brackets and Paren. So you know, just some random file. We're gonna check. This is our input file. Copy the file path. Copy the file path. Paste the file path here. That's what we want. Yes, file path. We have that. Then uh, go read file. So the 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 way you read file is this. Okay, I O U T O read file, and uh, it returns the text. Uh, so this is a function returns two things. The first thing is the text of the file, a string, and the second thing is the error. Okay, and then you check error. Okay, then you print text. Okay, so so far so good. Now we can actually run this file. So run this file. Good. You know it it read the file. You see it reads the file, and it just printed here. So now it actually just print prints the file content that's good so so far so good and uh, uh, let's see uh, okay golan this function actually returns a it returns a a slice of bytes yeah it actually returns a slice of bytes so that's why you need to convert it to string So let me mention, you know, uh, let me mention, you know, in Golan, 
you have the uh, in, you, you have a string. String is actually a sequence of bytes. So in GoLand, for example, we have a let's say a Go format. Let's call Go format. Okay. Format the code. You see, you see this line is not indented. So let's call Go format to format the whole code. You know, Go Go GoLand has this uh, great uh, solution about formatting code, which I actually agree. Let's see. For example, let's destroy the format now let's say let's destroy the format and you know let's make it almost like random you know let's see you see so this is not formatted now I just call go format it formats the whole file as opposed to typically in Emacs in Python in, in Perl in Lisp you know all these idiocy the programmers they format line by line you know they well, you do have a tool that format the whole, but that's kind of uh, not normal. I mean, that's normally you just format line by line, by line by line. That's not the case in GoLand. GoLand has the, has this tool called Go from, Go Format Building. For example, let's uh, undo. Let's go to Diet. This is the file. Copy the file name. Copy it. Uh, hold on. Copy the file name go to eShell, there's a format called go, uh, that, that is the name, go format, okay, then you just type the file name, enter, oh, then, then it outputs, okay, so you need to format it in place, I forgot what's, um, you need to format it, you see, it, it output the formatted code, uh, so, okay, so go format help, so if you want to, okay, so you need to say dash w, that will format the code in place. So let's switch back, uh, eShell, let's, so look at the bottom buffer here, magnify, okay, go format, go format, um, we need to give it a dash w okay enter you see you see this buffer it's all formatted okay so close that so that's about go format now i ha of course i have a emacs command that calls that so i don't actually go to eShell. all, all i do is i just press cc control c control c and you can see i'm calling go format and you just format the buffer. Uh, so go format. We so so now we have read the file and uh, into a string. Now we want to go through the string one character by one character. So we are we are going through the byte slice. Okay. So comments, questions, post. Okay. Uh, byte slice. So we want to go through the byte slice because this my text is a byte slice. So how do you go through a byte slice? Uh, I don't remember. Let's look into byte slice here. Now slice is just like array. In GoLand, slice is just a, like array, except that array you cannot change the length, but slice is bas is basically a wrapper on top of array, and you can change the length. In fact, it automatically increases the length whenever you add more elements. Uh, okay, so if I'm going to, um, I, I guess uh, if, if, if I'm going too slow, just say, okay. <laughs> but I guess most people don't know this. I, I, I just, I'll just assume you guys are new to GoLand, okay. I mean, otherwise, you know, keep typing comments so I know. So in GoLand, you have a slice. Slice is like array. It's a wrapper to array. It it uh, it had it can change um, length. So right now, this this my text is a slice. We want to go through it. So how do you do that? Uh, let's see. Uh, syntax of slice, literal expression of slice, print slice, print slice by line by line, create slice with make. Length, capacity, slice of slice, nested slice, append to slice, uh, cut slice, copy slice, clear slice, nested slice, 
loop through slice. This is what we want. Copy it. <laughs> this is what happens if you forgot, you know, if you have, haven't been coding the language for a while. Uh, so, okay, so here's what we do. We go through i for iv equals to range uh, size. Uh, wait, so what does that mean? Loop through slice where i is the current index and v is the value. Okay, uh, i is the current index. So we do want the index and we do want the value. Okay, first of all, first of all, there's one thing we need to do before we go through, we loop through it. Because now my string, my text, now this IOUT or read file function returns a, it returns a slice of bytes. Okay, so this my text, the type of my text is actually a slice, and each element is a byte, not character. This is important, not character, but a byte. This is important because if your, if your string, I mean, if your file contains a character that's not ASCII, for example, emoji or you know Chinese brackets, those are not byte. You know, if you contain any non-ASCII characters, then each of those characters are actually two or more bytes. For example, if you have an emoji, that's actually two or three bytes. You know, if you have a Chinese bracket such as, uh, such as, for example, the tortoise bracket here, or the corner bracket like that, you know, that character is actually two bytes, two or three bytes, you know, or four, you know, two to four bytes. So. But for any ASCII character, ASCII character is basically all the characters you can type on a keyboard. So for ASCII characters, uh, each character is one byte. For example, F is one byte, I is one byte, L is one byte. Okay. So what what is my point? So my point is this read file, this read file function, it it's return value the type of the return value is a slice of bytes, you know, bytes, not character. So, so what that means is that whenever you have an emoji, it will become two elements, you know, it, it will become two bytes, you know, and that's not, not what you want because, <laughs> because, because then because then you have if when you have a Chinese bracket, it becomes two bytes. You you cannot check, you know, because we are checking the brackets, so we want the character, not bytes. So how do you do this? How do you solve this? Because so so my text is a slice of bytes, and uh, if we go through the slice of bytes, that doesn't work be because each element is a byte. We want the uh, we want the actual character. So we, we start to get into uh, many tedious details of, you know, of doing this task. You know, it looks simple, you know, it looks simple by this outline, but actually, when you actually code, there are a lot of details. So, so right now we have this problem. Uh, this is a slice of bytes. We want it to be uh, there are several ways to solve it. So one way, I mean the simplest way, conceptually simplest, is to convert the whole thing to slice of Unicode characters. In Golang, it's called run. Uni uh, you know, so we want to convert it from slice of bytes to slice of run. That's one way to solve it. Let, let's just do that. Let, you know, let's let's try. You know, let's just try to get a prototype going instead of, you know, bogging down with all the details. Yeah, so so we want to convert this slice of bytes to um, slice of run. Am I doing good? Let's see. Okay. 
uh, it, uh, I'm not sure we can finish this. So let me show you IO, okay, IO util read file. So um, uh, IO util file. So here is the Golang documentation. And actually, let's go to Chrome. So we have JavaScript. Okay, and let's magnify this, magnify. And we want, there is the read file. That's a function we are calling. And you can see it, you know, Golang, here's the Golang documentation. So it says read file is a function and it tells you what's the input type. The input is a string, which is a file path. The output, here's the output, it returned two values. The first one, you know, the square bracket byte, that means it's a byte slice, a slice of bytes, or, you know, so it's like an array of, of each, each element is a byte. The second uh, return value is error. So, so we verified that slice of bytes. Now we want, we need to convert it to a slice of run. So what, what does that mean? Uh, let me explain, okay. Uh, actually, let, let me just do it because every time then I try to explain. Let me just uh, try to do it. Uh, run. So we need to look into run. So here is run. Now run is Golan invented the term run. It's Golan's jargon. What it basically what it means is just a, a code point in Unicode. Basically, it just means a character. Okay. Purpose of, okay, so we um, so we want to convert it to run. Yeah, let's do it. So, how do you do that? Actually, I have an article about that. Now, this article, this is actually very important. This article, if if you are new to GoLand, read this article. Okay, GoLand string by size run size because again. Golang string is a sequence of bytes. Now, if you have a sequence of bytes, what's the difference of, between uh, string and byte slice? I mean, byte slice is also a sequence of bytes. Why do you have, you know, e uh, both? Well, the thing with string is that string is a sequence of bytes. Remember, bytes, not characters, bytes. So string is a sequence of bytes. But however, string in Golang is immutable. That means string cannot be changed. Any time you change your string, Golang has basically creates a new string and re and discard the old one. So so that is very expensive because especially when string is long, like a file. So string string data type is not mutable. So if you want to change your character in, in a string, or if you want to do find replace, then the string data type is not, not good. You want to use byte slice instead. So byte slice is kind of like an array, array of bytes, and you can change any element, you know. So, so that is why you have the string data type, then you also have the byte slice data, data type, depending on whether you want to change them. Okay, if you don't want to change them, then, then string is good. Now, you also have run slice. So, like I said, run is run just means character. So, so run slice is just a, 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 like an array of characters. An array, but each element is a character, not byte. A character may be more than one byte. Okay, so, so, uh, so what we want here is a run slice. Uh, so we want to change a byte slice to run slice. Uh, let's see how to do that. Byte slice to string, string to run slice, run slice to string, byte slice to run slice. Uh, yeah, here's what I want to do. Byte slice to run slice. So here's a code. Let me show you what that means. So first of all, create a new variable, my chars. Okay, that's characters, a sequence of characters, uh, char slice. Okay, slice. Uh, let's just say char slice, okay? 
character size and uh, it's equals to these okay so first of all we convert the byte slice to string then we convert it to run size this is how you convert forced conversion things in Golang. Basically, what you do is you you type. I mean, you you type the type the type name in front as a function. Then you just call it. So this is what you want to change, and here is the type you want to result in. So string is a type. So you just say string that that returns a string. Now you feed that to 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 this function so because run you know this uh, square bracket run that that is the syntax to represent run size so when you do that then you put a parenthesis parenthesis behind that becomes a function that just converted to run size so that's how we do it okay so format it um, and we can actually print it. Okay, so let's let's uh, print it. Okay, so print it here and run it. Oh, okay. So now you see it works. But however, it prints these. Uh, it prints these. I I believe those are Unicode code point for each character for example let's let's go back to the input character i mean let's go back to the input file so i know a is 97 or 96 okay so let's run it again oh yeah a a is 65 that's right so let's small a is 97 or 96 so let's run it run it again oh there it is 65 uh, what happened to the big A? So wait. Uh, so let's call describe char. So capital A is sixty five. There it is. Capital A is sixty five. Small A is ninety seven. There. Uh, right so 65 so you see that this is correct 65 32 is space 97 is the uh, small a you see they, so we are printing each character uh, let, let's put an emoji okay cat face okay so let's so let's put an emoji so so let's call describe char so this this character is named grinning cat face with smiling eyes and the unicode code point is here it's 128568 128568 okay and now save it now let's run the golang uh, code again let's run it there it is 128 Five six eight. That's correct. But actually, for for now, we we want to print it as a string, not a, not a size. So let's convert it back. String. Run it. Okay. Now that's good. So now we actually got a slice. Now the next thing we want to do, we want to go through the slice. Okay. Go through the slice. So so I is the index. V, this is the char, uh, and let's say range slice. Uh, yeah, that's how you do it. So uh, the code is going to be here. Um, OK, so here here is how you go through a slice so here's our slice and i is the index char is the actual character so for example let's remove the print here let's print here uh, print i and print char okay let's just say c uh, let's say char okay we want to print 
Okay, let, let's run it. Good. Okay, so so we got index and we got the character in in Unicode. Uh, in fact, actually, this is actually let's do it this way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there it is. So we are printing the index and we are printing the character. So zero, one, two, that's correct. Um, okay, so we, we are going through the size. The next, then, then we want to check if char equals to if char equals to uh, if char equals to any of our parent characters any of those okay that's more code <laughs> okay so uh, how, how am I doing a test guys <laughs> oh my god we are I'm stuck Okay, let me just finish it then. Let's just go slow, however. Let's just finish it. So we need a list of characters. But how do we need to do it? How do we do it? I mean, the easiest way is to specify uh, brackets, all brackets, okay? One of the easiest way is simply just to make it a string. Uh, but but this is not what we want. We actually want we want it to be a slice. Okay, so um, we want to be a slice of runs. Okay, so actually we need to convert these two slices. So let's do that. Um, okay, something like that. Right, this is easy way to write it, all brackets. So here we have, basically we have uh, a slice of four elements. You can see the length is four. Let's run it. Uh, length is six that's not right Let's remove this print statement. Okay, let's comment this out for now. Why is this not printed? Let's run it. Char slice declared and not used. Oh, char slice declared not used. Why is this not printing? So slice, let's go back to slice. So we want to find the length of slice. Yeah, length, length is right, but why is it not?
it's length, not length. Uh, oh yeah, it's refusing to run because It's refusing to run because I've been using those variables and I'm not using them. Okay, so let's do this again. Uh, Go line is very annoying because of these. Oh, now finally. So it's correct. It says length is four. Uh, yeah, so all this trouble. Okay, now we are back here. Run it. Uh, I O U T O. Run it. All bracket declare not used. Oh God. Copy it. So. So we are going through the file, and we are checking if the character. For each character, we want to check if if it matches one of the brackets. So we need to do a loop again. Yeah, so we need to do a loop. So for range, okay, that's a loop. And for range, all brackets, okay. Okay, you uh, for all brackets check if check if the character equals to Uh, equals to var. Uh, var. Okay. And if so, print i and uh, Print cursor position and print char. Okay. Okay, like that. So we go through the file, each character. Then for each character, we also go through all brackets to see that character. That character matches one of the bracket character. If so, let's just print it. OK. Comment this out. Let's run it. Key declare and not used. Uh, this this is one of the very annoying things about Golang, because every time you declare something you do not use it, Golang will refuse to compile. Very annoying. This is annoying because when you are doing debugging or prototype, sometimes you want to comment lots of things out just to experiment, but then Golang will complain. You know you didn't use those whatever packages or variables you declared, so. You have to comment all of them out. This is very. Uh, this is a major problem. Let's run it. Okay, now it runs. Um, so actually, we did find this is good. So you see, we let's run again. Okay, let's not. Okay, so we here's the result. 
this is good. So it found several brackets. It the found a bracket could you know found the parentheses at cursor position seven, found a square bracket and cursor position ten. Okay. Yeah, so this let's see, uh describe char. Cursor position eight, correct? Uh, because in Emacs the cursor position counting start at one. So the first character is one. But in Golan, we are dealing with slice, you know, slice of characters. Slice start at zero. That is why, you know, in Emacs, Emacs says this character is cursor position uh, eight here. But in Golan, it says it is seven, you know, it, off by one. Maybe there's a bit. Okay, so anyway, so let me just finish this. So, is is it okay at a Tesh and a Tesh and Kathy? <laughs> so so far so good. Are you guys still watching? Let me just finish it then. You know, say it, say so. You know, good or something. You know, so I, you know, that's better for me. So let me finish. So okay, so far so good. We are making act. We. You know, this is actually normal. I mean, you know, if I'm coding myself, this is about the right speed, because I haven't been coding Golang for the past two months, and we are actually indeed making progress. Uh, so we went through, so we succeed in going through each character in a in a in a file, and we are able to match. You know, whenever we see a bracket, we know. So now, instead of print, we will actually need to push it into a stack. Okay, so next thing to do is we need to create a stack data type. So uh, to create a stack data type, let's say var stack. Okay, let's just say, say stack. Okay, so what here's another decision to make. What data structure of Golan to use to implement a stack data structure of computer science. Okay, so for that question, uh, for Golan, uh, pretty much you use a list. Golan doesn't really have something called a list, but rather it's just slice. So let me double check. Uh, yes, slice. Right. So you want to create a slice. So, so stack will begin as a empty slice. Okay. So let's review slice here. Um, let's use make to create a slice. There, here is the syntax. Uh, here it is. Let's print it. Let's put it here. Uh, begin uh, zero, okay. Capacity, let's say three hundred, okay. Now capacity is for uh, optimization purposes, because it, it, you know it tells Golan what is the potential number of items in the slice. Why do you need to tell Golan? Because so it can reserve a, a, enough memory. You know, it, it mostly it's for the purpose of speed. Because you don't really need it because every time when you have more elements, when you add another element to the slice, Golang will automatically, you know, increase it. You you know. But however, to implement that, Golang has to every time you know when there's more number of items it needs to create a new kind of memory management like create a new uh, you know space memory space for it and it's that that is slow so if you just tell it directly how many items you're gonna use then Golang is more prepared so it, it, it it's faster so that's what this argument is for capacity 
Uh, so anyway, we have a stack. Okay, now now we have a stack. Now whenever we whenever this happens, we want to push to stack. So basically, add 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 it to to the slice. Uh, so how do we do that? Let's see. Uh, print slash slice literal expression. Print slice create slice with make length slice of slice append to slice okay so here is the oh my god I remember this is problematic uh, append to slice this is how you add uh, a, a new element to slice okay append to slice so yep Kathy thank you so here we are going to append to slice. So our slice name is stack. So let's see. So here's how we do it. Um, this is how we do it. Okay. Let's say 1000. Okay. So right now we are trying to. So wherever we run into a character that is one of the bracket we need to push it to stack so that is what this line does so we so we push it to stack this line and uh, what's the syntax error here Oh, we need to uh, this 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 slice declaration is wrong. Actually, here it needs to be run. Run is a run means Unicode characters. It is a jargon invented by Golan. It just means Unicode characters. Technically, it means Unicode code point. And run is also a type in Golan. And that type is basically thirty two bits byte. Uh, 32 bits yeah 32 bits uh, that's what run type is so if you don't know what I'm talking about you know just go through, go through my tutorial it's it's explained everything here uh, you have run you have types uh, you know so anyway so stack is a slice of characters that's right we potentially 1000 of them okay now here we add a slice append stack new item okay here is a new item so we need to add a new item what that add item will be it will be it will be a pair of, of things uh, well no nah, you know I was thinking it's gonna be two, a pair of things the first item is the position of the character so when you have a mismatch bracket you can print out you know you, you can tell the user where the position is you know it's we will need that because you know then the second argument the, I mean the second element is going to be the character the 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 bracket that's mismatched but for now let's just just use a bracket forget about position because we are out of time uh, so this program will just tell you if there's a mismatch or not. You know, without without telling you at where. So for now, let's just add the bracket uh, char. So push it char. Yep. So we don't need to print. Um, Yeah, but at the end now we print now we print the stack, okay? So basically now at the end the stack will contain all bracket characters, okay? Run it. I declared and not used. Oh, okay. Now oh, god. Stupid golan. There it is. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's a bunch of numbers incomprehensible. Okay, uh, we need to we need to find out the proper way to print run. 
so that we don't see these you know bunch of numbers Unicode code points so okay how do you print out run so let's see go to run what's run purpose of run what's code point run literal print run okay here's print run um yeah it's the easy the easiest way is actually to convert it to string okay run it okay so actually so I think this is wrong you know so actually okay so you see so here's our stack right so it it found that one then it added that one then you know you go through the buffer then you found more bracket then you add more so at the end this is our what our stack looks like that's good so actually this print statement should actually uh, outside of the loop here here so let's run it again good so here's our stack this is what our stack looks looks like okay we making progress now the next step step is that after you add this add to the stack you need to check if the previous level and the current stack they are a matching pair uh, yeah you need to check that but how do you do that so basically our problem right now is suppose you have these two characters you know these these two bracket characters how do you find out they are matching pairs now that's actually a tedious problem <laughs> that's, that by itself will take at least 10 minutes you know so you guys see what the problem is so Kathy right Kathy do you see the problem Atesh Atesh are you still here say something comment so right now oh are, are you still here uh, Atesh so right now our problem is that given two characters you know one of them may be a, a parenthesis bracket character you want to check if these two characters are actually matched pair that is a problem you know given two characters how do you check if they are mat matching pairs or in, a, in other words given a string of two characters you want to check you know if the first element matches the second one and in the correct order you know it must be it must not be like that it must be you know in this order that okay that is actually so that's another that's a tedious subtask there are many ways to do that to approach that problem one way is you actually manually code a table so you manually code a table you know you manual manually say uh, you know this character will match this character so it's something like something like that so you create you create an array something like that uh, pairs and man you know so you manually create this lookup table so when you find this character and you find a pair you know then then you you have these pairs of matching characters then you say okay that is matching character if you know for example for example let's say so something like this okay matching pairs okay uh yeah so okay so in golan it's actually we need to put this in golan uh, format but actually we probably need to fix this Hey, Arcan. Uh, so you get the idea. You see, we need we can create 
I think this is probably the easiest way. You manually create a table of matching pairs. Then, given any two characters, you, you go through this table to see if it's you know one of those pairs. If it is, then you know they match. Otherwise, not. OK, so I guess this is what we will do. Now, the next step is to make sure this is a correct Golang format. It is not. Uh, first of all, these matching pairs will be a slice, a slice of pairs, and each pair is again a slice. Okay, that's one way to do it. Or we could use a map. Let's see if it, if a map is appropriate. So in GoLand, a map is another data type. Uh, that is key value pairs. Map is a an ordered collection of key value pairs. Yeah, in, in Python you call it dictionary. In Ruby you call it hash table. Okay, so so map is a database in GoLand. You could use I, we could use. And uh, here is the syntax for map. Uh, key type value type key value key value but so we we could use map for sure um, but alternatively we can just use nested slices which one is better? Uh, I have to think about which one is better. Hi, Ar Arcan. What's up, Arcan? Actually, I, I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of, I want to stop. One one hour and forty minutes. We we still have six people watching. Um. Oh God, I need to. So this is like torture. I need to <laughs> complete this. So so one way is to use map. Another way is use slice. You know, I'm I'm thinking because which data structure you choose, or which data type of GoLang you choose, they they impact what you're gonna do because you you have to think about which one is easier down the road. You know, because we need to go through this. So that's why you have to think about. A lot of these, but this is actually real life coding. I mean, um, you know, this is real life coding is like that 10 minutes thinking, one minute typing. So, Kathy says, interesting, I config show parent mod to locate parentheses. Okay, I never really think about how it works in back in back and in back end. Uh, yeah. Yeah, show parent mod. Yeah, I'm using that as well. Um, yeah, it kind of, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm pretty, behind the scenes, it actually does something similar because, for example, if you have, um, you know, for example, you know, it will highlight the matching one, not just the first one, you see. So, you see, so. In the background, it it's doing similar. Actually, it has to go everything we are going through. Um, you know, so actually, actually, thinking about that, since you mentioned that, actually, so Emacs has this built in. So if we are coding this in Emacs, this we could look at the Emacs code and kind of utilize it, but you, but but. From experience, I know that that may not be easy. Rather, it's easier if you just write completely new, because Emacs backend. I mean, the Emacs internals. They it's rather very complicated, and and besides, this is not difficult to write. Right? Like we are almost done. Almost, you know, we are almost done here. Uh, so. And also the you know the the reason we are writing this so we can do it massively like one on one thousand files, 
that is what why I want to do it because I use I mean in HTML and I use all kind of brackets so I want to make sure all the brackets are valid you know they don't have mismatched or missing brackets or in wrong order things like that so we can you know once I have this in Golan I can run it on you know 10,000 files within a few seconds so that is why I'm doing this you know I I have a version in Emacs Lisp I showed with you know uh, I showed before uh, but Golang is like five times faster than, than Emacs Lisp and the other reason I want to do in Golang is that I want to you know like a practice this is how you practice uh, learning a new language so that's that's what I'm doing okay so I need to finish this uh, matching pairs so so do we need to, do we use um, do we use map or not I don't know so let's, let's just let's just push on with the map okay so let's so if we use map then how do we uh, check so you see we need you know late, later on we need to go through these and we need to check not just the first element we also need to check the second element you know for example we want to check we want to compare a character with the first element uh, you know this element but we also need to check the second element so in other words it's not just checking with all keys we also need to go through every value I'm, I'm like I'm right now I'm thinking whether should I use map or slice of slice um, I, okay so let, let's go with the map let's just let's just try to go with the map okay so let's copy that paste it here so so map syntax is going to be type key type key type is going to be run value type is also run and then we type the key and value okay uh, okay now the way you represent run is by single quote in Goland so let's let, let's show you how let's see narrow to buffer switch or double quote to single quote yeah so there so expand again uh, and uh, switch so this should be a comma uh, instead I mean the colon right so I think that's that okay I think that's like that so this is no good uh, probably uh, let's make it okay so wrong oh yeah so this is wrong we don't we don't need that go format okay now good coding go format okay now good so we have matching pairs as a map each key is the opening bracket okay value is the ending bracket okay so matching pairs okay now since we have this structure we actually don't need need this anymore you see this old bracket it should be generated from this you know but that's optimization we we do that later um, so anyway matching pair because otherwise otherwise we have repetition we have redundancy you see because the brackets are declared in both places you know in in both forms we we rather just want to have this uh, but anyway so matching pairs now we have now we need to check this is another yeah this 
this I, I don't think I can finish this you know this is gonna be another uh, 20 minutes minimum <laughs> even if we can do that so let's let's do this okay let's open a new buffer paste this save it as xx dot go uh, magnify insert the Golan template let's just write a simple code that solves the problem of checking if two characters matches is a matching pair so we are doing we are starting a subtask here okay so var char1 okay char1 equals to a let's say char1 equals to that var char2 equals to that okay and matching pair put it on top and uh, so given two chars We, we, we want to know if char1 and char2 are matching pairs okay so so first of all we need to go through the matching pairs here so go uh, so for range okay so here's how we go through matching pairs go through matching pairs key value okay uh, if key equals to char1 now now char1 and char2 should be run remember run means a character so they should be single quote okay let's double check run right so you see run in golan run is a data type that means a unicode character and it the syntax is single quote so that's how you define it here so so char1 char2 so if key equals to char1 then Now, there's a lot to do here actually um, <laughs> first of all okay so if key equals to char1 okay and I think and is like that in Golan uh, and key equals to char2 wait that's not right okay I think um, map is the wrong format okay so so wait so if key equals to char1 then if uh, if var equals to char two, yeah, that's that's it. That's it. Okay, return true. That's it. <laughs> I think. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, return false. Oh my God, we are we are good. Um, wait where do we return force so matching pairs that um, yeah I don't know let's just run it and see what happens import not use format uh, too many argument to return what uh, yeah you should you know <laughs> I just try to run it it doesn't work 
usually when you you know sometimes you try to skip thinking and just try to learn it, see if it works usually that's a bad uh, thing to do because that happens usually when when you are very tired you know you just want to skip thinking and you just want to try to see something works but usually that ends up very bad because you usually ends up you trying 10 times 20 times something still doesn't work so when you program at least for me the the way that works best is always just to think through what's going on so here we want to char uh, it's probably sh sunshine in my eyes so not yet okay so here what we what's going on is key equals to char one so if key equals to char one then we want to check if value equals to char two that's right now if that's true uh, if that's true we want to exit the loop and return true now when you return to the yeah it also exit the loop I think so it just returned true um, let's just let's just print matched okay yes let's just try that okay yeah uh, what uh, yeah so it, so this is how we found out if if two characters are matching characters but but let's try something else let's see okay that that seems to work um, Okay, we added a else here. Um, okay, yeah, so this seems to work. Let's, uh, we need more test here what if they are reversed direction like that no good what if they are um, let's try paren okay run it no and yes wait something is wrong here Oh, you need to exit damn you need to exit so how do you exit the loop so let's look at loop look while loop infinite loop break loop yeah break okay you say break here so once you found this and you say break okay um, Okay, let's uh, let's do result. So if char
yeah I think this is better so print okay run it matched true that's right okay so now we can change let's go back this case run it matched false correct uh, let's try that run it matched true okay let's try another thing um, run it oh declare twice uh, problem with Golan okay run it false that's correct so we can assume that this code is correct now we can make this into a function uh, we can make this uh, into a function then use back in our code here let's um, let's try it then uh, maybe we should maybe we should stop because today is two hours yeah <laughs> watching one all the people are gone so I don't know who is here now Kathy you are here so that's it for today thank you guys for watching bye <laughs> oh, Kathy, you are the only one. Bye. Oh, Bartholomew is online now. Oh my God, Bartholomew, <laughs> you are you you've been keeping quiet today. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>